So patients with advanced emphysema in general experience significant shortness of breath, initially with exertion, but very often even with rest. Patients don't notice the presence of collateral flow between their lobes or not. However, we've found that it's more than just a physiologic curiosity as it's been described in the past, but actually impacts those patients who are likely to respond to this new valve treatment. So the Zephyr endobronchial valves were first used to treat uh, patients with severe emphysema as a less invasive approach than the proven therapy of lung volume reduction surgery. But that's a surgery in patients with really advanced disease and there's a lot of adverse effects associated with major surgery. So the hope was we could place valves in the most affected regions of the lungs to allow the air to come out of those lobes and allow the better quality lung to expand into the chest and function better. Um, and so uh, it really is a less invasive approach to volume reduction to reduce the residual volume, the trapped air in the lungs, and to allow the remaining lung to expand and exhale more efficiently. So the primary effect of the Zephyr valve is to reduce one destroyed hyperinflated emphysematous lobe. But what we learned and what we're presenting today in our abstract that the next downstream event is redu reduction in the global hyperinflation. So when patients exhale, they can exhale more completely and get more air out of their lung, allowing more room to expand and inhale. And this, in fact, we've, we've shown that the relationship between the amount of that reduction in residual volume, which is a measure of hyperinflation, is directly associated with very meaningful things, including quality of life, symptoms, uh, a measure that correlates with flares or exacerbations, and walking and exercise tolerance, which is really important to patients. So they're really directly linked. Yeah, so the Zephyr valve, some of the improvements remarkably occur almost immediately after we do the procedure and send the patients back to their room, they often are sensing that new ability to take deep breaths. Um, but over time now, they actually can do more work, do more exercise, have more activity when, when it goes well, and they then recondition their legs and they then can actually uh, allow themselves over time to do even more activity. So what you see is at three months they get all their improvement in lung function but their exercise tolerance continues to improve to six months in a, in a year afterwards because of the reconditioning effect. What we've learned is these valves only work in patients who do not have connections between the lobe that we're targeting and the remaining lobe in the lung. Because if there are collateral connections, then we can't get that lobe to collapse. So there's a, there's a need for treatments, alternative, less invasive treatments for patients who have collateral flow positive. And there's some other devices and experiments out there that haven't evolved as much as the valves that we're hoping uh, we can find an angle in those patients.